All right, we're back with B Cash FS being in more hot water. The drama continues with this one. Typically, I like to combine this into a new segment, but with this particular drama filled event, I'd like to dedicate a full video and talk about Linus reprimanding the primary maintainer Kent on the B Cash FS development. We're going to get into what happened this time, but let's first talk about how this all started. This right here is from the Linux kernel lore mailing list and originally posted on August 24th, 2024, a few months ago replying to Kent Overstreet, the primary maintainer of bcashfs, and Linus specifically replying to, hi Linus, big one this time. This was due to a big merge happening from the bcashfs project, which we're going to get into, but the surprising part was Linus's reply. Yeah, no, enough is enough. The last pull was already big enough. This is too big. It touches on non-bcash stuff, and it's not even remotely some kind of a regression. At some point, fixing something just turns into development, and this is that point. Linus continues by saying nobody sane uses bcashfs and expects it to be stable and warns that this is getting beyond ridiculous. And why is it getting beyond ridiculous? Well, it's really how the project is getting treated and even leading into the point where Linus says that I'm starting to regret merging bcashfs. Even though it's an experimental project, bcashfs has had issues with its development cycle and the way that they're introducing large experimental fixes into one of the most sensitive systems of the kernel of file system there's definitely some core differences here between how Linus approaches things and how Kent approaches things. But this is just the past drama that led into this new drama because it's getting a little more heated now. Let's talk about bcashfs and what it is. bcashfs is a copy on write cow file system for Linux based operating systems. It's primary developer, as we talked about Kent Overstreet. First announced it in 2015, it was added to the Linux kernel beginning with kernel 6.7. So fairly recently, as we are currently somewhere in the stable 6.11 Linux kernel edition. It is intended to compete against modern features that ZFS has, BTRFS has, and the speed and performance of EXT4 and XFS. So we can see why this is an important file system as it competes against some of the biggest ones that we use, touting to have speed and performance and modern features all in one, which is fantastic. And we're going to get into some of those features real quick. This is from the bcashfs website, the cow file system for Linux that won't eat your data. What features does it have? Well, here are the modern features, a copy on write like ZFS or BTRFS, full data and metastack checksumming, multiple device usage, caching, compression, encryption, snapshots. It's scalable with high performance and low tail latency. All wonderful things to have in a file system, but are they wonderful when founder of Linux and the primary maintainer of bcashfs, just butting heads, as they seem to have two separate philosophies on developing code. More on the bcashfs project, right before we get into the existing drama, is that it's primarily built on C. As you can tell here, 98.3% C written code. So it's not part of the Rust kernel drama that we've been seeing lately, but is an experimental part of the kernel, although it may be kicked out of the kernel soon entirely. We're going to see what the creator of Linux, Linus Torvalds, has to say about this. But before we do, make sure to smash that like button as we're going to get into the topic. Subscribe below if you like videos like this. You wouldn't want to miss one in the future. But anyways, now we get to Linus's frustration. In this latest round of commits and merge requests, Ken says a lot of little fixes, bigger ones included, and specifies those. The final part of this patch series, fixing snapshots, unlinked file handling, is now on the list. I'm giving that part of the series more time for user testing. And that's where the frustration begins from Linus. I'm getting really fed up here, Kent, in a reply to the last part read out, which was several more file systems repaired and thanking the users for providing testing. And this is mainly Torvald's frustration with Kent's development approach. Particularly, let's focus on the untested packages that are being submitted. You can imagine how this could destabilize the kernel, especially when patches are getting poorly tested, which are causing failures on certain systems. I believe the lack of collaboration and communication with actually other kernel developers and testers seems to be the major issue here. It seems like Kent is almost developing bcashfs on his own without external proper review and contribution and kind of contradicts Linus's whole model of collaborative development. We get to two choices that are presented by Linus himself, which are basically ultimatums, and the disagreement definitely escalated quicker after this reply to Kent. Let's get into this more. These have commit times from last night, which makes me wonder how much testing they got. And before you start whining again about how you're fixing bugs, let me remind you about the build failures you had with big Endian machines because of your patches had gotten zero testing outside of your tree. That was just last week, and I'm getting a strong feeling that absolutely nothing was learned from this experience. 
I have pulled this, but I searched for a couple of the commit messages on the list and found nothing. Okay, I found your pull request, which obviously mentioned the first line of the commit messages. I'm seriously thinking about just stopping pulling from you because I simply do not see you improving on your model. If you want to have an experimental tree, you can damn well have one outside of the mainline kernel. I've told you before, and nothing seems to really make you understand. I was hoping and expecting that BcacheFS being mainline would actually help development. It has not. You're still basically the only developer. There's no real sign that this will change. And you even seem to feel like sending me untested stuff that nobody else has ever seen the day before the next RC release is just fine. You're a smart person. I feel like I've given you enough hints. Why don't you sit back and think about this? And let's make it clear. You have exactly two choices here. A play better with others, B, take your toy and go home. Those are the choices. Signed off, Linus. What a big bombshell there for Kent. Basically, start playing with others or get out of the kernel. A big overall ultimatum, and Kent really needs to put some thought into it. But did Kent do this? Well, let's first talk about why this situation is important to Linux, because it reflects a broader theme of maintaining kernel stability, fostering collaborative development, and maintaining experimental features within the Linux ecosystem. The way this drama has unfolded will set a tone for future experimental projects in the Linux kernel. We can see why Linus is trying to kind of protect the overall Linux environment and model. I mean, it's technically his job. So with all that being said, there is an overall community sentiment surrounding this whole BcacheFS and Linux kernel or let's just say Linus Torvalds drama. The situation is definitely mixed, but before we get there, how did Kent respond? Well, he did respond to varying portions of Linus's emails, and here they are. This is a reply to these commit times from last night, which makes me wonder how much testing they got. The commit dates are from last night because I polished up commit messages and reordered it until last night. I always push smaller fixes up to the front and fixes that are likely to need rework to the back. The vast majority of fixes are all about two weeks old. And to the whining build failures and zero testing outside your tree, no, there simply aren't that many people running Big Endian. I have users building and running my trees on a daily basis. If I push something broken before I go to bed, I have bug reports waiting for me the next morning when I wake up. And then a fairly big response to the learning nothing from the last experience and seriously thinking about stopping pulling from you and not quite letting what Linus is trying to tell them sink in. Well, here's a response to that. At this point, it's honestly debatable whether the experimental label should apply. I'm getting bug reports that talk about production use and working on metadata dumps where the super block indicates the file system has been in continuous use for years. And many, many people talking about how at this relatively early point, it doesn't fall over like BTRFS does. Let that sink in. BTRFS has been in the main line for years and it still craps out on people. I was just in the meeting two days ago, closing funding. And a big reason it was an easy sell was because they have to run BTRFS in read-only mode because it otherwise craps out. So if the existing process, the existing way of doing things hasn't been able to get BTRFS to a point where people can rely on it after 10 years, perhaps you and the community don't know quite as much as you think you do about the realities of what it takes to ship a working file system. And from where I sit on BcacheFS side, things are going smoothly and quickly. Bug reports are being diminished in frequency and severity. Even as a user base goes up, distros are picking it up, just not Debian and Fedora. We can speak about how Debian recently dropped BcacheFS, specifically orphaning BcacheFS tools in Debian. Basically, the BcacheFS tools proved to be too complex for long-term support and was orphaned in Debian. For, so basically going from the stable to unstable branches and caution was advised when using BcacheFS for production use. Interestingly enough, big distributions like this not picking it up might be a sign of something. But anyways, we go back. The timeline I laid out LSF is still looking reasonable. Then Kent speaks on getting more people for the BcacheFS project. I've got a team lined up just secured funding to start paying them. It looks like I'm about to secure more. It says the community is growing. And finally, at the end here, a reply to the ultimatum. It says, you've certainly yelled a lot. So at this point, I want to talk a little bit of the overall sentiment of the Linux community surrounding this whole BcacheFS and Linus Torvald situation, because it is a little mixed, but primarily on one side, which is leaning in the favor of Linus, agreeing that Kent's behavior and development practices have been disruptive and a little bit problematic. Now, I don't want to say that necessarily. I just have been reading through the forums, including Hacker News and 
other ones. Community members agree with Linus's approach and having to enforce these rules in order to maintain the stability within the kernel. Kent has to follow the proper procedures in order to make sure that things aren't disruptive. There's also a little bit of disappointment here. It seems like on both sides here, there's a confrontational attitude and a little bit of chaotic behavior. It does look like bcachefs is a promising file system, but in order to collaborate constructively, non-combative actions have to take place, and it makes people lose faith in the overall long-term viability of actually bringing bcachefs into the kernel because it seems like on both ends they can't come to any agreements. And then there is a small portion of people who argue the fact that Lena should just be more flexible and less aggressive, although I'm very confident that it's a minority, and I am not with that camp at all. I think he is approaching this overall like he should. In summary, the community generally is supporting Linus on his stance, even if that means removing bcachefs completely. But let's get back and see how Linus responds. So the vast majority of the fixes that were all about two weeks old, with the patches not appearing on the list, that seems entirely irrelevant. Apparently they are two weeks on in your tree and absolutely nowhere else. And then let that sink in. Finally, replying to the very end where the ultimatum was given. Seriously, you completely dodged my actual argument, except for pointing out at how we didn't have a process two decades ago. If you can't actually face this, what's the point anymore, Linus? And there is a lot more here to read. I'm going to post a link in the description below if you want to continue reading through this mailing list and the drama going back and forth. But we see that the BcacheFS project and Kent are facing criticism between Linus and the Linux kernel community due to the concerns here of developmental practices, issues including last minute patches, seemingly a bit of lack in professionalism, and just deviations from the established kernel development process. Will this negatively impact Linux? Well, I don't think Linus Torvalds is going to allow that, especially with his frustrations here being dished out. While the BcacheFS project has potential due to its performance, reliability, and scalability, can Kent align himself with the community standards? Will this be a project in the future that is released to the Linux kernel? I'd love to get your opinion in the comments section below. What do you think about this situation? Why has there been so much drama in the last month or so of Linux, including the Rust versus C drama, and now this maintainer drama? Where is this type of stuff coming from? I'd love to know your opinions on it. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux, and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.